Luton, Bedfordshire, the town that's probably best known for Vauxhall Motors and Luton Airport. It's also the home of internationally acclaimed portrait painter Peter Dean. The Irish-born artist came to the town as a teenager in search of work. Some four decades later, he is still living and painting there, producing canvases of outstanding quality. Peter's portraits hang in private collections from North America to the Vatican. His subjects range from prime ministers, sportsmen, to church leaders and showbiz personalities. Some of his distinctive canvases have fetched more than a million pounds when auctioned for charity in his native Ireland. But in the main, he earns a more modest living from his commissions. Peter spends his working day in a small studio he built in the attic at his home. Peter's latest commission comes from J.P. McManus, one of Ireland's wealthiest businessmen and one of its most successful racehorse owners. J.P., a lifelong friend and patron, organises the J.P. McManus Invitation Pro-Am Golf Tournament. Since it was launched in 1990, the tournament has raised more than 55 million euro for Irish charities. J.P. has asked Peter to paint a single canvas depicting 50 of the world's top golfers, all of whom are taking part in the Irish Pro-Am event. It's been a long, hard struggle for the 69-year-old artist to gain international recognition. His childhood was spent in Ireland, where his parents rented an old farmhouse on the outskirts of Monaghan. And my brothers, I always start with the eyes, both in drawing and painting, and uh, everything is, is around, around the eyes. The, the eyes determine the size of the, um, of the head. This is um, Rocco Mediate, uh, uh, an Italian golfer who will be playing in, in the JP Pro Am, JP McManus, who commissioned the painting uh, uh, next year. Uh, and he's, he's uh, one of the best golfers in the world. Anybody who plays golf will, will recognize the name. And he's one of, one of 50 that will be included in this, this uh, finished painting. I'm going to mix the colours I will use for a portrait. Starting with titanium white, yellow ochre and vermilion crimson and I mix them together until I'm satisfied that the flesh colour is right. The other little Sides, I do some white beside it. Then with yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, they're the mid tones. And especially if you're painting a man whose a lot of his face is blue, blue and grey, like round the chin, for instance, this is used quite a bit, this colour here. And then for varying shadows, I use vermilion crimson and ivory black and that, that can, you can have the shadows. Shadows are usually warm, warm to dark. Peter's working life began at the age of 14. He was apprenticed to a furniture factory and showed natural aptitude. But two years later, the boss dropped a the bombshell. boss came and said, Peter, we're closing down, the factory's closing down. Uh, and I had to leave and, and he came, the boss himself came and visited my father and said you know how good your boy is at making furniture we're closing down it would be an awful shame if he had to if he, if, if he didn't continue Peter's my dad packed in his own job as a gardener at the local technical school and took his son to England in search of work they went to Luton, where a relative lived, but there was no furniture making jobs and both Peter and his dad ended up in Vauxhall Motors working on the production line. I, I was very distressed about that because I loved, loved handling the smell of wood, loved making it. Uh, uh, that was the end of that. It 
it was while working at Vauxhall that his mates encouraged Peter to enter the work's annual art competition. The judge was a teacher at the Slade School of Art, and although Peter did not win the competition, he was impressed with his artistic talent. He lived in London, he came back up, made an appointment with me, came back up, picked me up in his car, took me to the college in, in, in Luton, uh, spoke to the headmaster and said, I just feel, I remember listening to these words, that this chap would be a bit wasted welding cars together. Uh, we, he should be doing something uh, with his hands. It, it took me round and uh, advised me that I should do graphics. You can't make a living. What age are you? 24? And uh, you're married? Yeah. <coughs> Making a living painting? Almost impossible. Commercial art, graphic design. And I, I, I said I was happy. I was happy to get out of Vauxhall and I'm uh, going to get a, a generous government grant to, to live on and doing art even though it wasn't painting. While studying at the Luton School of Art, he met art teacher Ronald Maddick, who was to have a great influence on Peter's style of painting. Uh, I'll never forget him. And he, he started showing me how to paint, what colours to use, what paints to use, and uh, how to go about it. And I avidly <coughs> took to it. That led me to painting. This was the early 1970s when John Russell, the 13th Duke of Bedford, was making headlines. He had opened a safari park at his stately home, Woburn Abbey, near Luton. Desperate for work, the young artist decided to approach the Duke. I thought, now, if I could get a commission from the Duke of Bedford, uh, uh, that would set the ball rolling. I was terrified at the thought. I had to do it, needs, must. Went up and knocked on the door, huge uh, wooden door. My knees were knocking. I, I kept turning away. The door was answered by the butler. And I, I said, pretending to still be a student, and that I was asked to paint a portrait of somebody important. And uh, uh, would he sit for me? And he, he laughed took me in, introduced me to his family and said, now tell the family what, what it is you want. They must have felt sorry for me because I was trembling with, <laughs> with fear. And uh, he, he, he commissioned me to paint I, and he sat for it, I painted him. I mean, that, that was the start of it all, really. Peter went on to build a successful career as a portrait painter and also branched out into the world of horse racing and show business. J.P. McManus commissioned me to paint his horse, uh, one or two of his horses, but the main one was Esterbach. I, mean, I, li I liked that painting very much. And it led uh, to a lifelong friendship with J.P., and who's um, still commissioning me to do work. He constantly commissions me to paint for his charity auctions. He's my best customer, and that's who this is for. And uh, uh, there are gaps in between these commissions that sometimes I struggle uh, with. But uh, I'm a very lucky man. A Dublin businessman and former aide of the Irish Prime Minister Charles Hockey commissioned him to paint the Taoiseach, which opened up another lucrative area. I painted Charles Hockey, Prime Minister of Ireland at the time. Uh, Michael O'Hare, top racing correspondent and broadcaster. Sean McBride, Nobel Peace Prize winner. And uh, Pedro O'Donnell, uh, a writer and, and activist in Ireland at that time. He's a lovely man as well. I thoroughly enjoyed No vanity or ego about either of those two people. In fact, the only, of the four, the only ego, and it was ego with capital letters, was Charles Hoy. The person I liked best, who amused me most, and I spent a lot of time with them, was uh, Eric Morecambe. Painted his wife and a young son together, the same canvas. Uh, I spent a lot of time there with him, uh, very amusing. In fact, it, maybe he was talking too much, I had difficulty uh, getting on with the work. John Major was a, a true gentleman. 
uh, didn't ask for us to, to stop, wasn't bothered how long, and I remember going over two hours with him and thinking, and f forgetting that it was that long, and uh, uh, he didn't mind that at all. The portrait was unveiled at the National Gallery in London, which uh, thrilled me to bits. I used to practically live there. It's the home of art, and to have and, uh, all my family were there at the unveiling. Four friends were there. It was wonderful. While many successful artists set up studios in more exotic locations, Peter remains firmly established in Luton. I'd like to be in a place where I can paint for seven, eight hours in a day. Uh, not because I have to work for, for economic reason. that's what I want to do. And many places have been at a studio in, in Dublin, in Ireland, and I'd, I'd work for an hour and then my mind would start wandering and I'd go for a walk and come back and again. And the, the painting wouldn't get done. And more important, it wouldn't, as I walk hour on hour and hour, the painting gets better and better. You're resolving it and think, things uh, are, are working well. And that's the way a painting is done. I also uh, painted in Spain, where I've got a place as well. And the same thing happened there. Not, not. I wouldn't say distractions, although the sun was a, a, a distraction. But you'd think that the comfort of it there and the, the colour and the, the painting out of doors in Spain. Would, uh, here, in 13 West Hill Road, Luton, I could go up in my studio in the morning at eight, eight o'clock, start uh, contemplating, and then work in painting hour after hour, and I'd be doing that for 30 years. And it's the only place. Uh, that I, I could do that work continuously and a painting um, you could start in the morning the painting's at its best at five o'clock because you've achieved it you've built on it from the morning and it, it's there for the complete and that's what it's all about it's not painting two hours here and two hours there it's painting for five to seven hours continuously to, to get it working to get it right and then you can look back that's it the job done. Even if the painting's not very important, that's how to get it done. And that's why I stayed here. I was frightened, not frightened is not the right word, reluctant to go anywhere else because I'd been in the most, uh, the nicest place. I'd been to America as well, painting and uh, uh, tired, got tired of it. Uh, the only place I could do that uh, is here.